hello, we can't meet and hold the West Cork History Festival in physical form this year for reasons that are probably too obvious for me to mention. But what we have decided to do this year is to record a number of the highlights of the programme that we were preparing. And one of those is Kieran Doyle, from whom we're going to hear in a moment. But I thought it was worth giving you a word on where it is we're sitting, because each year at the History Festival we try and do some new things. And the plan we had originally had to listen to Kieran and Alan and to understand the work that they've been embarked on was to have an exhibition of some of the, the mapping and the images and the recording they've done of these memorials in an open space that would have allowed people who came to the festival to both see it, to interact a little bit with some of the materials we had a plan, possibly even to have some artefacts mm -hmm. from the period, but also to talk to uh, Kieran and Alan about their work. We can't do that, but what we can do is to get a snapshot from, uh, from Kieran of the work. And we decided to do it in one of the outbuildings uh, at Rosebank. We couldn't have fitted 150 of you in here, but we can fit the two of us. And uh, I have never spent this long in quite this spot. And, and Kieran is grateful that he's never had to spend this long in this spot before. But we thought we would do it because mm. these buildings, the, 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 the date of them, and in a sense, the state of them represents some of the physical space mm -hmm. that the people that we're going to be talking about used in the course of the revolutionary period. So it had something of the texture of that period. And we wanted to capture that uh, in the recording we make uh, today. So we hope you'll enjoy this discussion and the others that we record and, and, and post on the website on the 8th of August. Kieran Doyle, for those of you who don't know him, is a Renaissance man. He's a teacher, has been a teacher of many generations uh, <laughs> of, of Clonakilty's finest but is also a historian of considerable note and the work he's done on Bandon. Many of those who've attended the uh, History Festival no doubt have read. But this project is, is a new one. Tell us a bit about the kind of the scope of the work, Kieran. Well, I suppose, well, thank you for the introduction, Simon. It's uh, very nice of you to say all those kind words, you know. So, Simon, I suppose the fact that we're, we're in the middle of the, the, the decade of centenaries, the celebration of that, um, it's, it's fascinating to me that part of this decade of centenaries is looking back and remembering and when we think about Cork, Cork City, Cork County and the dozens of memorials around the place I know that some people speak about or write about the odd one but there's never been um, a project that has captured every one of them so myself and Alan decided to um, basically go out try go up every nook and cranny every Protestant church every little town and village that had a cross, a stained glass window, um, any type of memorial, um, map it, find a coordinates about it, but also interpret it. Um, what interests me is, isn't just the actual history, what happened here, it's the language of it. What are they trying to remember? Who are they trying to remember? Or who are they trying to forget? Yeah. And who's putting them up? So there's a massive um, narrative about memorials that needs to be discussed. Um, and, it, and not only that, it's a kind of a physical embodiment of what happened. It, it, it pockmarks the landscape. It tells us what happened here, why it happened here. And it's just something I think if we bring together, it'll, it'll just add those layers that you mentioned yeah. earlier about. And how long has it taken you to? Oh, I think uh, we're on our third year now because, I mean, the first part, you have to find everything. Yeah. Um, of course, then when you f you're photographing everything, you're mapping everything, and then you're trying to find a bit about the history about it. But it's not just literally taking the history, it's the interpretation of them. It's looking at the symbolism of them, symbolism of them, the language, what is it saying to you? Um, the information, the misinformation in them. And of course, then it opened up a whole other areas. Where, you know, where are the women? They're so underrepresented in our monuments. The civilians, they're under, underrepresented. Of. Celebrating the War of Independence is probably easier because everybody's kind of on the winning side. You know, we, we won the War of Independence, we, got, we created a free state. Yeah. This is probably something easier. When you get to the Civil War, then it becomes much more difficult again. And walk us through the, the different elements that are being commemorated of the period, because you start with the First World War, don't you? Start with the First World War, and I think that's really important, because the First World War runs right through the revolutionary period. And what fascinated me about war commemoration, World War commemorations, it was indoors, it was hidden. 
it became something that Protestants could celebrate, but Catholics couldn't. Mm. Um, so what you'll find is memorials that are indoors and in, on stained glass windows in churches, on, on, on plaques inside Protestant churches. And really it's only become a 21st century thing to commemorate World War veterans in, in more open places, in, in, in plaques and, and, uh, and walls and things like this. This is a new 21st phenomenon, but in the 20th century, no. Um, to be a Catholic in the British Army, a no, no. To be remembered, no, not at all. You, you know, you'll find them in the in the castle towns, and you'll find them in the yalls, mm. um, in Bandon, of course. Sort of kind of urban centres. Um, uh, as I said, the twenty first century, you're finding them maybe a little bit more garrison towns, like Fermoy now. There's a particularly big one in Fermoy. There's one in Middleton. There used to be a, a garrison in Middleton, not, not more in recent times, let's say. Um, perhaps where there was an association with um, heavy British numbers. Even in Cove, which was long time associated with Navy, had nothing only up to re recent years ago. So maybe because the 21st century has allowed us to have greater scope, greater debate, greater understanding of what Irishness meant, and it didn't just mean one small, narrow thing, has allowed commemoration to widen. So the 21st century ones, where mm. are they? Mm. Well, you, you'll still find them in churches. In yeah. fact, one of the most fascinating ones is there's one in the Church of Ireland in, in Bandon, on the square in Bandon. But what's fascinating about it, and as far as, as, far as I know from, from our research, it's the only um, Protestant church to have Protestant and Catholic names side by side. Yeah. And that was fascinating. The newer ones, you'll get in Fermoy, uh, Middleton, if you, go to, uh, if you go to the Church of Ireland in, in Yaw, mm -hmm. um, there's a new one in there as well. Um, so they're popping up in Cove, of course. Um, uh, it's for the Navy, um, yeah. British Navy, but they're popping up, definitely. And there was one, wasn't there, to the Royal Monster Fusiliers in Cork City? Yeah. Um, um, the one, uh, the original one in, 19, yeah. in the yeah. 1920s. Yeah, I mean, it's, when I researched about that, it was fascinating to see the, the tens of thousands that attended the opening of that. Yeah. And again, you have to think of the 20s. I mean, this, the Free State had only just been established. Yeah. Uh, there must have been still that very vibe of we're establishing ourselves uh, it, it, we're only recently fighting with the British yet there was still very much a celebration of um, their part they played in, yeah. in the British Army which once you get into the 30s and 40s it got weaker and weaker and yeah. new governments started to want, didn't want to associate that with the foundation of the state yeah. Um, yeah. and it became something put to the side and over the years it it, 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 it was vandalised it went into ruination and it's again in the 21st century it gets cleaned up yeah. it gets put to prominence they, they, they do up a nice garden around it so you know even old monuments are becoming um, uh, reborn and I, think, I suspect that's a theme we'll come back to mm. in terms of the patterns of, mm, mm. of uh, memorialisation yeah. 1916 mm -hmm. and the commemoration of the events of 1916 that's yeah. the next chronologically the yeah, next yeah, block yeah, for yeah. You. I suppose a great way to talk about 1916 when we were kids we used to always call it the Dublin Rising that's Very interesting true. because you hear that theme that in the mm. War of Independence there's a sense that Cork needs to mm. recover its honour having yeah. not played a significant yes. enough part in yeah, 1916 yeah, yeah, yeah. was that apparent in the in the earlier memorialisations or were they simply not there the earlier memorialisations seem to be individual they're talking about individuals like uh, Collins and, you know, uh, P um, Sean Hurley, uh, who lived near Clonakilty, who, who um, died up in, in the four courts. So they're kind of more personalised ones. Um, the 21st century ones are trying to c capture uh, a greater strata. So they were celebrating 1916. They would then mention Cumberland Manor. They would then mention the safe house that would follow on. Yeah. Um, so it was a way of, of capturing kind of a Cork identity with 1916 and what followed then. Yeah, and that leads us on then to mm. 1919 to 21, the yeah. War of Independence. Yes. And what's the what's the distribution there? Uh, what, what what surprised you about what you found in the memorials to the War of Independence in Cork? Yeah, it, the War of Independence gets commemorated very early on. You're talking about the twenties and thirties. Um, funny enough, for Bannon, for such a loyalist area, but often you find in contested areas of uh, of contested identity mm. that that symbolism comes very important, of course. And you've got these small little brass um, uh, Celtic cross type crosses. They're only about three foot high all around Bandon. Mm -hmm. And they're ones that date back from the 20s or 30s. But they're everywhere. In fact, the War of Independence is, is the most, has the most memorials by far. It yeah. is the most represented. But it's easy to understand that because 
if you like, everybody can agree on a position. We we won our independence, let's celebrate it. There's nothing yeah. really to contest there as such. It's interesting because you have generations having to live with commemoration too. People maybe that were in, in, in were opposed to them and now they're reminded by this. By and, and that's actually, I suspect we're going to come on to that when we talk about the mm. Civil War and that a sense of memorialising something mm. where the contested uh, party, as it were, or the, mm. the, the party on the other side is still present. Mm. But do you get any sense in the War of Independence memorials of... Uh, of thought about that. Mm-hmm. What, what, what are your observations on the kind of the form of those? With, with War of Independence, you, you get um, you. This is where the statues of the busts come in. Um, there's very few of them in Cork, and they're usually reserved for the top brass. Yeah. Michael Collins gets a statue, McCurtain and and Max Sweeney. You know, they're yeah. outside the city hall. Their yeah. their 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 half statue or their busts are there. Tom Barry has a bus in Fitzgerald's Park. So very prominent people get this. Sean Hurley, one of the newest ones, he was one of the few yeah. Corkmen to uh, to die in, um, in in 1916. He gets a, even though it's in the period before, but he gets a statue. So uh, that belongs to that period. It doesn't seem to belong mm. to, to, to any other period. And I do, and, and though Collins dies in, in the Civil War, it's almost that he's remembered for his War of Independence. Yes. Yeah. Because to be remembered yeah. in any other way is, yeah. you know, yeah. to, to kind of desecrate the memory of, of Irish unity, let's say. Yeah. And the form, is, I mean, you mentioned the Celtic mm. crosses. What mm. are the other um, types, yeah. different types that you yeah. see? A lot of time you get plaques, just where you have your information. They can range from just your brass plaque to your, your, your stone plaque. Of course, um, the Celtic Cross is an interesting one. Now, I found that fascinating, and Alan myself would often debate about this because I would talk about how the IRA were often excommunicated or they were condemned for the reprisals, yet oftentimes they'd look, you know, they would be remembered with the Celtic Cross. Yeah. And was was that a paradox, or was it the saying to them, well, we didn't care about your excommunication, we're very... Or was it a way of kind of an association of Irishness and Catholicism? And, of course, a lot of the older plaques are in Irish as well, purely in Irish. Yeah. Um, the newer plaques English some plaques mixed but the older ones are Irish so there was a pure identity uh, going on here we're Irish this is our language this is our religion and this is what we stood for so they were saying that as well Yeah. and it was creating that identity but I thought it was interesting because some because of the excommunication orders that uh, yeah. Bishop Conlon and, and, and others had issued um, that they would still choose that, that religious iconography and, and when you think about some of the Thinking in Cork about mm. Clonmelt, about Kilmichael, mm, mm. and some of the great encounters mm. in the course of the War of Independence. Given that some of the figures involved in those War of Independence mm. actions then had Civil War existences mm, sometimes mm. on differing sides, mm. did you get a sense, and we're going to come on to the Civil War in a second, mm. but did you get a sense that some of the memorialization of the War of Independence mm. was kind of casting an eye to, to what happened next, either in trying to pacify... Mm. And, and find a way of reconciling the, yeah, the it's, later difference or, it's, it's or a, ignoring the Yeah, it's a great question and, and you, you wonder which comes first because a very good example of that, there's, there's a man, John Howard in, in, in Dreamer League. Small little plaque. It's like one of those, what you could call like a grave gravestone type ones. And um, he dies as a Free State Army man. And of course, Dreamer League, the heart of Republican area, and you think, you know, it's a bit curious. But what is mentioned on it is that he fought in the ambushes of Toreen, Kilmichael. Uh, yeah. So his pedigree as a soldier in the War of Independence gets mentioned. And yeah. maybe that's why he's allowed to be remembered. Yeah. It's, that's why the language is important, the information that goes up in it. Yeah. Um, and the misinformation, if I could just talk to you about the importance of memorials as, as passing on a legacy. In Coolavokig, on the edge of Ballyvornia, as you go in, the the uh, the memorial tells you about this great four-hour battle where twenty-eight British soldiers were killed. It never happened. There was a battle, yes, three. I think there was three uh, British soldiers slain, not twenty-eight. Um, and people for years, people who I know, have told me that they, that's what they took as as red. And this is the fascinating thing about commemoration because it's in stone, almost Moses-like. These yeah. tablets, it's it's real. It becomes the narrative. But that's very interesting. And again, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this, that sense that you have to interpret memorials mm. not necessarily as exclusively a record, but mm. as an account of what people, as you say, mm. wanted to have remembered, what they didn't want to have mm. remembered, mm. but as a, a kind of assertion of what they would like mm. 
their yeah. uh, their their identity to be. They're not just merely marking a landscape out for us. They're trying to tell us something, um, and that's why the symbolism is so important. You know, you get some memorials with the soldier on it, the militaristic, the more bombastic, and then you get some sol- uh, some memorials, and there's a more a conciliatory uh, aspect to it. There's um, a little lad, Patrick Goggin, who was up in Ballinagree up North Cork. He was shot at the age of seven. Years later, his memorial goes up, in, uh, prob- uh, maybe 20 years now, and there's a dove on it. You would think, in uh, you know, the, 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 the hurt of losing a seven-year-old yeah. boy to the black and tans for nothing, for what? Yet the symbol is a dove. Isn't that amazing? Does yeah. that tell you yeah. what the mo- modern audience maybe is trying to say? So the symbolism, as well as the language, is, is, is really important. Um, even going back to the World uh, War One memorials, um, you know, they often talk about, um, you know, for king and country, but for God as well, you know, that kind of crusade. And but the Irish have it uh, um, in the War of Independence, they have it as well, because may he sit on the right hand side of God is often a phrase used in mm. Irish. Mm. So again, almost kind of the um, the righteousness of the of the idea. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about what you found on the Civil War. Yeah, see, the Civil War is tricky because, first of all, you can understand why a lot of Republicans, Republicans are, are uh, get the memorials to their name because more than likely they're local because a lot of free staters were coming from different parts of the country. It, it's still sending out a very a, a message. It's still sending out a reminder. Like you take uh, Captain Kennefick's memorial in Coltrane, for example, and the language they talk about murder. They talk about murder. You know, they don't mince their words, and the record does show the, does suggest all right that this man was was brutally um, tortured uh, in 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 being murdered. You know, where we talked about conciliatory nature of some memorials, certainly some are trying to tell us um, this happened. Sure, maybe, but we're not going to forget it, and we don't want you to forget it as well. Maybe it's a good thing, but maybe it's not because this is the civil war. Also, in, in if I could just go back to the war of independence just briefly, when they talk about language as well uh, in Carrick Navarre, there's um, there are memorials. Ireland on free, it quotes Pierce mm-hmm. shall, shall um, uh, never be at yeah, rest, yeah. and this is uh, uh, shall never be at peace, and this is written uh, written onto one of the memorials as well. So language is is very important, but yes, uh, there's very few free staters. Uh, commemorated. It's more of the Republican side that gets remembered, which is interesting because it's the free state that's establishing the state, it, it, it's the new government that's running things, and these little things are popping up. And that's really fascinating for now, mm. for the decade of centenaries in a sense, because we're clearly going to be entering the phase when the role of the authorities, mm. the role of the state in official memorialisation is at its most delicate as we try and mm-hmm. think about the Civil War. Yeah. And there must be a bit in the heart of many a civil servant which is to say, well, let's do as little as possible. But yeah. the, the interesting thing about what you're saying is in the absence mm-hmm. of a state-supported mm-hmm. act of memorialisation, local mm-hmm. expressions of that will yeah. come and they yeah. may or may not be balanced. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what's your thinking on that? Well, you know, as we've talked about all the other memorials, what's come very much to the fore is the 21st century memorial. And how and how they've reinterpreted, or maybe just relooked at something. I haven't come across a 21st century Civil War memorial. No one's no one's rushing out yeah. to, to 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 bring that to the fore. Um, and as you said, it's a dangerous thing. Um, some people see it as unfinished business. A lot of the memorials for the Republicans, it's a, you know, to stress the Republic, um, kind of unfinished business. That more is to come. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of a peace process when you've got a different relationship going on Ireland and Northern Ireland now and the Republic um, you know how do you square that circle and it was a great phrase you used earlier you mentioned um, um, oh from the committee yeah yeah Yeah. what was that was a fantastic phrase yeah to broaden sympathies without having to abandon loyalties I mean that's interesting because that has very much been the government's approach and I'm interested in the the 21st century Mm. memorials to Mm. each of the different groups Mm. that we've Mm -hmm. talked about Mm -hmm. Have they are they typically national state inspired mm-hmm. ones or are they local expressions of of memory? It seems to be local, but a lot of it, they're sponsored by the state because what's happening is the state is offering grants and they're encouraging people to commemorate. So while the state may not be coming down and cutting the ribbon and bringing down ministers, uh, except for the big ones like maybe like Thomas Kent yeah. and, and people yeah. like that or Collins, um, it's it's localized. But what you find in the 21st century, there's a lot of grants going with, so by, by proxy, yes, you could say the state is encouraging uh, commemoration. And maybe that's why you're seeing more of a, 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 a spectrum of different types of commemoration rather than just 
men, more of independence, competence, uh, combatants, um, you're seeing a wider range of, of type. Yeah. And you've touched a, a couple of times on the fact that some of the 21st century memorials are are approaching new groups mm. who've been mm. ignored or omitted yeah. previously. Can yeah. you talk a bit about that? I mean, you thought about women and civilians. Yeah, yeah. There are four memorials out of about 380 that are just dedicated to women only. Four. It's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And there may be a further 16 that mention women, some by name, sometimes a reference to women. Um, common and man are two women in war, including just a particular brilliant one in, 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 um, in, the, in the church, St. Peter's in, uh, in Bandon, which mentions men and women who survived World War I and the, the role of women in, in, in that. So that's a fantastic one from that point of view. It's the only one for World War I that mentions um, specific women by name. But they are mentioned sometimes, men and women who served uh, common and man are getting a little bit more mention in the, 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 the 2016 commemorations. Mm -hmm. But very, very few, as I said, four women in all, just... Out of 380? About 380 memorials, yeah. Mm -hmm. And civilians, also not yeah, often... Yeah, I mean, civilians, um, roughly again, um, there's about 265, 67 civilians who die um, in, in this period, more than any other uh, single group, um, yet there's only 17 memorials to them. And when I say 267 civilians... It's not being all shot by the British soldiers, by the mm. way. These are shot in friendly fire. Some of them are shot as spies by the air. Some of them are 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 are, um, are killed, uh, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe they they they're victims of an explosion at the air uh, you know, like a ta like Tom Barry when he when he blew up the um, or sorry when they attacked the the, the barracks in Roscarbury, when they're going through the rubble the next day, one of the RAC officers comes comes across and bombly throws it. Uh, and of course in 40 where it explodes it ends up killing a child so indirectly civilians are dying yes. as well yeah. but they're forgotten because that's not a nice thing to remember when you're fighting for I suppose freedom and all the good things to come with it you don't want to remember that part of that cost a child a four year old child that yeah. day yeah. and are they coming back now rep represented on these 21st century memorials at all yeah they to, to some degree to some degree they are yeah but it's 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 a slow burner um if anything it's the one that i think we sh that people who are interested in commemoration should be focusing on yeah and it's interesting because of course in the commemorations of 1916 mm. yeah when the new memorial was unveiled in dublin civilians as well as all of the mm. dead of 1916 yeah. were memorialised in alphabetical yes. order. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I wonder yeah. if that will become, mm. that, it, that yeah. inclusion yes. uh, yeah. will become more notable. Yeah, and, 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 and it would be great to see. Um, one that just pops to mind, a lady called Molly Egan. Um, she was a civilian killed up in Newtown Sandrum. Um, it was in the Civil War, actually. She's a small little plaque on the road, just her name, RIP, small little green cross, but very few of those kind of things, very yeah. few. You know, there's a particularly active um, uh, committee in um, down in the Bear Peninsula, and they've an interest in some of the RIC heritage. They're interested in commemorating them, but it's local, it's personal, um, it's to remember them. And this is the thing about commemoration: it's not always about point scoring. It's not always about necessarily saying even some this happened here. It's sometimes it's that personal that they want to remember them. One man was killed in 1916. And he was killed up in Tipperary, but he was from the Bear Peninsula. Another man was a, a DMP officer. Another man was a, another RAC officer. So you, you, you're finding that it pretend, depends often on the historical societies, depends on the family connections. The state tried to do, get behind a state sponsor, and we know yeah. what happened there. Yeah. Um, and that, that's really interesting, because yeah. in a way, at a national level, that mm. appeared to be this moment where we discovered the limits of inclusion. Mm. Mm, mm, you know, mm, there mm, are mm. some things we are not prepared yeah. collectively yeah, yeah. to remember. And yet, what you're describing... Is a is a locally driven yeah. desire yeah. simply to record yes yes without yes. necessarily attributing yeah. approval or disapproval yeah yeah I, that's an important thing and but I suppose you know to talk about the national one I suppose they, there was a little bit of um, naivety in perhaps trying to record all of it including black and tans yeah. knowing their record knowing yeah. the criminal damage and, the, and 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 the war crimes that they committed and I think probably you could understand maybe we're saying this is the historic record this was happened but it was a step too far I mean, yeah, there seemed yeah. to be a lack of 
of, of that's clarity it. from yeah, the government yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. that. Maybe yeah. that's something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think for a long time the RIC are as kind of so associated with the black yeah. and tans that they can't be separated with. And that's why I think the government scored an, scored an own goal because we were finally kind of realising to the RIC we're not maybe these bogeymen that we thought we were. But then when they talked about commemorating them along with everyone who died in that, including auxiliaries and black yeah. and tan, it brought it all that well, yeah. it, it yeah. poisoned that well again. And that, I mean, that in a way is a great example of, of the kind of significance of the work mm. you're doing because the, as you've said several times, memorialization is, is never merely mm. a recording. It's the recording mm-hmm. of an interpretation. It's the, it's the things we would like to remember. Yeah. But I, I, I'm fascinated by the idea that this is not, in a curious way, given that we're talking very often about mm. stone and inanimate mm. objects, it's not static. Absolutely. It is Roy Foster who said commemoration is present-minded and, 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 and no truer a sentence. Um, yes, certainly those 21st century memorials, they're an inclusive. They're, they, 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 they capture the wider meaning of what Irishness is. And it's also why the work that you've done is so valuable, because you're cataloguing them, mm. interpreting them, yeah. and revealing to us the variety of them. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about when the, when we can read all oh, of this yes, in, its, yeah, in yeah. its fullness. Well, I have to say, I have to give a shout out for my colleague, uh, Alan O'Rourke. He's mapped uh, where all these are. So you've got your, your 1916 ones, you get your Civil War, your World War ones. So you get an idea of uh, the distribution, where, mm-hmm. where, where, they, where they, the gluts of them, particular one maybe. And they can tell you about where certain regions were strong in certain areas. Yeah. So Alan's, Alan's worked really hard in that aspect of, of, the, of the book. And... Uh, you know, I still, I still have to see the finished product myself. He's teasing me all the time with some fantastic maps. But we'll have it by the end of the time. year? Or we'll yeah, to... we should have it by the end of the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we hope we're going to be able to, to show one or two highlights on the oh, website. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. Com- we'll, hopefully, uh, we'll have some, some nice images for you because some of, the, some of the images, of course, not only historical, some are quite beautiful. Uh, so there's a, there's a lovely visual aspect to it. Yeah. Uh, some are very quirky, of course. And, of course, the maps, Alan's maps are amazing as well. It gives you that overview and he's... He's a credit to him. Credit I'm to him. putting you on the spot. Will you come back in physical form when the, <laughs> when the festival is in physical form next year? Oh, and, yeah, and, sure. And look, show yeah. us more. Usually I'm in the audience anyway, so, uh, you know, of course, I mean, we'll I'd, be make you sing for I'd, I'd be honoured. I'd be honoured, yeah, it'd be great. Thanks, Simon, yeah. Look, we'll Kieran, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot thanks, for doing Thanks, me. thanks, yeah.